One use case for voice that I find really compelling is customer support. Just like with text-based agents, you can query your knowledge base and provide useful information. But sometimes you can't actually answer a user's question using a knowledge base. We need a human. Now, offering phone-based support is really expensive, but sometimes you need a phone number. Maybe it's for legal reasons, or maybe you just want to provide peace of mind for customers. Rather than staffing a phone number 24 seven, having a voicemail box can be a really good middle ground. And rather than relying on third-party services to manage this, why not send the messages from your customers into where you work already? Here at Voiceflow, that means Slack. I'm gonna show you how we built a Slack voicemail inbox in Voiceflow using functions and our voice feature. But first, let's try it out. My friend Mike has been having some billing issues recently. Hey, thanks for calling us. I'll help make sure your message is sent to the right team. Which team are you trying to contact? Uh, yeah, I need to talk to the billing team like right now. What's your name? My name is Mike Smith. Thanks. Please say your message and I'll pass it off to our team. Yeah, I need some real help with my billing. All my money has disappeared. I don't know what is going on, but we need to fix this ASAP because I can't pay my bills. I can't buy anything. It's a real problem, all right? I need to talk to whoever's in charge right now. Thanks. I've sent your message to our team. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. So that's our agent in action. Now let's take a look how it works behind the scenes. So this is our workflow. And you can see here that we have a couple of things. First of all, we just use a message step to greet the customer, but then we immediately use a choice step. By the way, you can get this template in the description down below if you think it looks useful. Now we have three teams in our example business, but you can have as many as you want. We use a choice step to determine which team the person is trying to call. Now we have legal customer support and billing, but for example, what if they don't say billing? Well, if we look in our choices triggers and take a look at our billing intent, for example, you can see that we have a bunch of utterances and we say like finance team or billing team, or we even just try and detect cases where that team would be necessary. For example, I want to dispute a charge on my bill. So once we have worked out what team it is, we now need to work out where are we gonna send this message? The way this template works is rather than sending every single message to the same channel on Slack, we actually send it to the team specific channel. That way the correct team is getting visibility immediately. So we can see here, we have a JavaScript step. And in this JavaScript step, what we do is we get a team that was just set from the choice step. And we have a channel for each team. This is using Slack channel IDs. And if you go and download this template and import it into your own project, there's instructions on how to get these IDs. But you can see here, we have legal billing and customer support each with their own channel. So we detect which channel was said and we go and save the team channel variable as whatever the correct channel ID is. Now, once we've done that, we then go and collect some personal information. We get their name. In our case, it was uh, Mike Smith. Poor guy, not having a great day. And a cool thing about this step is we have the automatically reprompt option enabled. Now this is just here. And the really cool thing about this is if a person doesn't say a name or if it's a little bit unclear what the name is, it will automatically reprompt them to say it again. I also really like how, say they just say their first name, if Mike just said he was Mike, it would actually say, hey, what's your surname? That way we're making sure we get their full name. That works because this entity caller name has the type set to name. All right, so once you've got their name, we then capture their message. This again uses a capture step, but this time we're saving the last utterance. We're saving the entire user reply. And then that's saved to a variable. And in this simple example, that's all we're doing. In a bigger example, what you could do is you could try and proactively suggest things using a knowledge base. And then if you can't work it out, forwarding it to a voicemail message. All right, so once you've captured that data, we then do the coolest part for me, and that is sending things to Slack. Now, first of all, we build our Slack message. We do this again using a JavaScript step. We're using a JavaScript step rather than a function because this is some really simple non-reusable code. We're just manipulating a couple lines of data. If we were trying to build something reusable, we'd use a function and we do in a second. But here you can see that we're building out this Slack message. We're just creating this array. We're saying the new messages from this person. This is their name and this is their message. And then we just join it together using backslash n. Uh, Slack's API will automatically detect this and make a new line, which is really, really cool. And we have to make this a string because otherwise our function won't receive the data properly. Then underneath this, we have this send a Slack message function. And here's where the magic happens. This is how the data actually gets into Slack. We'll look at the code in a second, but you can see here that there is three different inputs. We have team channel, which maps to the channel ID. 
we, we got that earlier. Uh, we have this message, and that is the message that we just built in that JavaScript step. And we have Slack token. Now, the Slack token is stored as a secret on VoiceFlow. And secrets are really, really cool because they make sure we don't accidentally expose something secret. Like if we stored this Slack token in a variable, people would be able to go take a look at our session data and they'll be able to work out, hey, this is the token that lets me send any message into Slack. And that would be bad. You can set secrets by going into your project, heading down here to settings, and then going to secrets. You can see here our Slack token secret is here and I can click to reveal it and you just get a big blur because uh, this is a video and I'm not gonna show you our Slack secret. That'd be scary. Okay, so let's go back and have a look at our function. You might remember that here we have this send a Slack message function. And if there's an error in any parts of our process, it says just if something went wrong, call back later. It's a nice easy bit of error catching. If it works, then we go and say, hey, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. But how do we know if it worked or not? Well, we can take a look at this function by going back here and choosing functions. And here's our send a Slack message function. Now I'm not gonna go super in depth in this code, but I'm gonna point out a couple things that we do. First of all, we validate that all the data that should be coming in is actually coming in. In this case, it's a Slack token, a channel ID, and a message. If any of those aren't set, then we just return this error where it says missing required input variables. Now, if I come down here, you can then see that we go and do a request to Slack's API. And Slack's API is actually really well documented, which has also made this really easy to build. But you can see here, we just have a channel ID and a message, and we just send that data to Slack. Slack will then handle everything from there. Here is how we send the data, and here is how we validate what is coming back from Slack is probably what we're looking for. Now, you might remember that there's two paths once we send our message, success and error. We set these here. You can see that if everything goes well, then we return a success path. We set this debug message to message sent to Slack, and then that's it, we just return that. However, if there's an error, then obviously we set the error path, but in the debug data, we actually go and have this message where it says error, and then the error message. This might be from Slack, this might be from up here where we set it. And that way we're just making sure that we're able to debug our agent. That's a big thing if you're building custom functions. Make sure you're like saving debug data somewhere. Ideally, by putting an error path and then like sending this debug data with useful error messages, because otherwise debugging can be a little bit challenging. So that's how you built a voicemail to Slack automation using VoiceFlow. Oh, and you can actually include this Slack function in any project on VoiceFlow. I'll link to it in the description down below. Let us know what you're building using voice on VoiceFlow and uh, I'm gonna go check on Mike and check he's doing okay. Good luck and uh, happy building.